We spoke earlier about how divided we are and some of the challenges that come with this time of the year when we gather with those we love most but may not always agree with. Joining me now for more on how to navigate this, Sun Vision Strategies President Chris Prudhomme and founder and CEO of Rebel Communications, Laura Fink. Great to have you both. You're in the trenches. Uh, Chris, let's start with you. How do you talk about these issues that are so divisive and keep it civil? I'll have one simple answer. I'll say you don't <laughs> during the holidays. <laughs> or it's hard. <laughs> It, it, it is hard. Look, we're, we're in a very polarizing time, and it's just a very challenging time. And I, I, I just don't think that people uh, have the same sense of thought and understanding as we used to. Uh, we all see things through a different lens in life today. And unfortunately, people are so hard on their, on their views and their perspectives, straight down a, a narrow pipe, so to speak. And it's just something I don't, don't think you talk about. People are very intense and they're very mm -hmm. uh, thought-provoking in their conversation, especially with the recent election, obviously, with obviously President Trump, uh, former President Trump and President Joe Biden. Uh, I just think it's a tough topic. And there's a lot going on in America today with the trials that obviously have just uh, both trials have just taken place on right. Aubrey and Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, we have a, a rising cost of inflation. We have the election uh, issue. Some believe it went one way, some believe it went obviously another way. Uh, it's just a subject that I, I personally would not talk about at all. Laura, I don't advise anybody else. If you want to have a happy household, don't talk. <laughs> what happened to us, Laura? I mean, that we can't even really bring these things up now around the dinner table. Well, it's no secret that we're polarized. And I can tell you that in my household, I've got a father who's a Republican, a mom who's a Democrat, and a whole family of differing opinions. I think one of the things that I try to remind people is that it's important to keep it civil and kind of the power of listening. I think we often want to share our own opinions, but we don't want to listen to others. And you know this, Joe, that the person asking the questions has the power in the conversation. So we all have that ability to sort of ask each other thoughtful questions and to respond with civility and with kindness. Right. And to listen. It's a great point, Laura. Uh, Chris, let's go back to something you brought up here a minute ago, and that's the, uh, the, the two trials we just went through. And and the Rittenhouse trial in particular, he says he doesn't want to get involved in politics, but politics have gotten involved with him. There are uh, offers of internships from Republican Congress people, and Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to give him a, a Congressional Medal. Should we be, uh, you know, po politicizing any of this? So, uh, so one thing I will say this, Angel, you know by now, I, I'm, I'm very straightforward and, and, and to the point. Uh, but I, I'll say this. One, let's remember that people did die right. in, this, in this particular instance, right? And that's the first thing I want to—it doesn't matter what political party you are, people died. Uh, so I don't think that it should personally be politicized. I do understand the, the, the aspect of the right to, to bear arms. I, I get that 100%. I, get the, I understand the aspect of those who defending self-defense. I do understand that. At the same instance, to, uh, to politicize something that was a tragedy, I don't think is right. Um, obviously, the young man will benefit financially in numerous aspects. Uh, and frankly, he probably is probably in his best interest to do so because uh, he can't go out and get a job. He can't go to school uh, unless he's doing homeschool. Uh, but the reality is, I don't think it should be politicized. We're in a very tumultuous time and people died. Uh, but people have their own perspectives and their own opinions in this particular matter. But the fact that there were so much, so many, excuse me, so many different dynamics in this, and it was such a tumultuous uh, situation. But if you recall during the trial, uh, he, he lost two lawyers because of the, they right. were, uh, there was talks of them going to news medias and trying to sensationalize things. And they said, hey, we just want to show that this kid is obviously innocent in, in his respect right. and was doing self-defense. Yeah. So that was something that obviously the, the even himself and his family was against in the, in the beginning. So I think they should continue on that path and not politicize this because like you just said, you said it best, Joe, uh, he didn't jump into it. They're politicizing it for him. And I think he needs to kind of uh, do as he's doing, kind of take a step back so right. he's not creating a monster, so to speak. Hey, Laura, I want to get you on independence. They're losing faith. In fact, according to Axios, they're increasingly feeling alienated from politics. They don't like the partisan divide. This is not good news for either one of you. What do you do about it? Well, I mean, it's on brand for uh, political independence to be to be disengaged and, and to feel the, like disconnected from the system and never more so than in these particular political times. I think there's a little bit of pandemic malaise there that is is bringing independence away from the system. I think they don't like their parents fighting and they see that on the right and the left. Mm -hmm. And as we talk about politics, it's constantly through a partisan lens. And, and that's something that even though they may have partisan leanings and 
vote more often with one party or another. That's been proven. They they don't like it to be framed as such. So they're they're sort of a, a party without a home or people without a home. Now, but keep in mind what they may not know is even though they are less engaged than either the right or the left, they swing elections. Repu right. uh, independents were responsible for swinging elections in every major con congressional takeover. So we're talking in 2018, uh, in, in 1994, and then what am I missing? Uh, in 2008. Okay. Or 2010, excuse me. Right. So, Chris, uh, there, I heard today someone say Biden won because people were tired of Trump, and now they're tired of both of them. So, uh, you know, typically you see a change election or maybe a status quo election. What do you do in 22 to swing this your way and get these independents? Well, uh, frankly, I'll, I'll say this first. Uh, the, the GOP is going to really have to do a job. Of, or they should look at, the, obviously, the governor's uh, race in Virginia, but it's really going to have to do a job in really uh, motivating uh, my, more minorities young people and women. I think those are really key factors that the party's done a horrible job in, and they have to do a lot better. Uh, President Trump did a phenomenal job, obviously, as increasing African-American vote, but they're going to have to do a more effective job in, in, in doing that. Uh, second, we are a very, very polarized country uh, uh, right now, uh, beyond measure. Uh, and I don't want to go into one of your next topics, but uh, that's something, obviously, where black, uh, backsliding democracy, right. so to speak, and our, our core values have constantly shifted. We have floating principles right now in America. This has to stop. We have to get back to our anchor, and I think they have to focus more on that. Everybody kind of taking a step back and getting to what our core values are. And look, just, just being people, just being human beings. But one of the things that's, to get that's, away that's from the problematic, even with Republicans, Chris, is this, uh, this whole you know, election integrity. The independents don't like it. They don't like this talk. They, you know, they think that that's a partisan issue that should be left behind and move forward. Well, you're right. And, and there's a reason why uh, uh, the independent community had more folks who did not vote at this time. Actually, it changed from 11 to 16 percent uh, this year. And they said, hey, hmm. you know, we're tired. We don't think anything matters. Uh, right. That's what their thought process was. And, and look, I, I think that there's a big divide. We're not going to change it. There are folks who generally believe uh, that President Trump won and, 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 and that there were issues there. And there are folks who believe that obviously uh, President Biden, uh, the current president, obviously uh, won. Uh, but, but the reality is this. Uh, the election outcome obviously was the election outcome. They're still fighting in certain states, obviously, like Arizona and other locations. But I think it's time for us really to come together. We can continue to fight this fight. It could be years. Right. At the end of the day, it's not going to do anything for us to keep this uh, uh, going on, so to speak. And some folks might be mad at me for saying that right now, but I just think it's time for us to come together. Yeah. G the GOP has to focus on 2022 right now. I think we can take back, the, obviously, the House and, and the Senate. But right. We're going to have to be very firm. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to focus on, obviously, uh, uh, the rising cost of inflation, obviously, and uh, okay. uh, gas prices, things like that. All right, Laura, let's get you on this backsliding democracies report. It is a first. It's the first time the U.S. has been on it, and there are a lot of reasons. The 20, ele 20 election that we had talked about, the polarization, state voting rights, how troubling is this to be on this list, Laura? It's incredibly troubling, and 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 key within the findings were that the January 6th insurrection and the undermining of the election results without facts truly were what put us on this list. So the lack of trust, and whether it's independents or Republicans, the lack of trust that this breeds within the system mm. makes us less of a robust democracy. The election integrity issue is critical. We have to trust the systems, and we have to trust the independent actors. And we've seen that erosion, you know, not just in the electoral system, we've seen it in the health system with people mm -hmm. not trusting public health officials. Those are the types of things that cause us to backslide. So if we want to get this back on track, we've got to trust those nonpartisan election officials. Mm -hmm. We've got to trust the re results of elections, even when your guy or gal didn't win. I hope we all agree on that. We got to bounce. We're out of time. But thank you to Sun Vision Strategies President Chris Prudholm and founder and CEO of Rebel Communications, Laura Fink. Great to have you both. Happy Thanksgiving. Giving. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.